Hi everyone, welcome to Desert Bus. This is a uh, going to be a short let's play of a very interesting game. Um, for those that do not know about Desert Bus, because it's a kind of a niche thing, it's very weird. Um, this is a mini game that was included in Penn and Teller's Smoke and Mirrors, which was never actually a released video game uh, for the Sega CD in 1995. Um, it ended up getting canned. <laughs> And one of the artifacts from that game is this minigame, um, in which the goal of the game is to drive a bus from Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas, Nevada, which in real, real time, um, at 45 miles an hour, would take 8 hours to drive the entire 360 miles. Um, if you can get from Las Vegas, or from uh, Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas, Nevada, you get a single point. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. Um, it is a uh, going to be a very kind of a masochistic um, thing, but uh, this what I'm playing here is actually a uh, some people painstakingly and lovingly recreated the game um, so that one can play it. Um, the the reason for all of this is that there is a um, a big there's a group called Loading Ready Run that every year they put on a gaming marathon. Um, to raise money for charity, where they play this game for 24 hours a day for about 7 to, I think we're up to now, like 11 days. <laughs> Something ridiculous like that. Um, anyways, I am Solon. I am um, Let's Playing This for Rainy Day Let's Play. This is our first kind of real episode. It is mostly a test. <laughs> this is a test you're watching. Please do not be alarmed. Um, but I'm a, testing my Avermedia equipment, I'm testing my microphone, I'm also testing my ability to critique a game um, like this. <laughs> so the, the test is not just hardware, but it's also software, as in me. I guess I'm soft and wearable. Um, but uh, the, the idea is that if I can critique this game for, let's say, 20 minutes or so, um, then I think that this will not be a problem. So, anyways, um, the idea of Rainy Day Let's Play and the production that I'm trying to put together here is that um, you can critique a game on many different levels in many different ways, and while playing through a game, you can kind of unfold all of these different layers that the game has underneath it. Um, the interesting thing about Desert Bus is that it was... It's a mini game. It wasn't made to be anything serious. It wasn't made to be something this big, expansive critique on busing or reality or life itself or anything like that. But there's also ways that we can um, critically analyze it to make it seem like that or make it like that to an extent. Um, so I guess the first place I want to go when addressing Desert Bus, which this is the entire game. Um, you're watching it unfold right now. This bus ever so slightly leans to the right, and because of that I have to keep overcorrecting it to turn to the left. If I roll off of the road for too long, then uh, my tire pops or the bus breaks down in some way, um, and the game is essentially over. At that point I'll be towed away, <laughs> which hopefully we'll see at the end of this video, um, if my driving ability has anything to say about it. Anyway. Um, the first place I wanted to take this um, is I kind of want to posit the question, to what extent is this a game? Um, I mean, what you're seeing right now is all of it, so is this really a actual game in the sense that it has all the things that a normal game has? Um, and I'd like to challenge that it is a game. Um, in Jesper Jewell, who's a, a game writer, um, and does game studies, has a book called Half Real. Um, it's about video games between real rules and fictional worlds. It's a very clever book. Um, but the first part of her book is defining what is a game. Um, what he posits is that there's, um, after analyzing a whole bunch of different definitions to games that 
games have six things. They have six qualities to them. Um, the first thing is the biggest one, that it has rules. Um, and that's very simple. Does it have something that you're uh, confines that you're working in, something that subjugates you to some task? Uh, does it have a variable and quantifiable outcome? Um, does it have a valorization of outcome? And that just means is there reward to your is there risk and reward? Is there something like that? It doesn't have to necessarily be risk and reward, but it's, you know, like that. Um, is there player effort involved? In Desert Bus's case, there absolutely is. Um, is the player attached to the outcome? Because um, if they're not, it could be like a gambling sort of game, um, which is kind of a game, but kind of not, because it's kind of up to random luck at times, depending on what the game is that you're gambling on. Um, and does it have negotiable consequences? Um, is it is it something where you can just get up and leave at any time? Or is it something that you can maybe gamble on, you could bet on outcomes to it? It's not something that's just strictly, oh, this happened. Um, watching a fireplace or the game of life is not necess or the uh, the original version of the game of life is not necessarily because um, the outcome is already decided or like Candyland <laughs> the outcome the outcome is already decided so there's nothing to do in it and it's not really a game um, or at least it's a it's a borderline case of a game the nice thing about Jules diagram is that he allows for um, there to be like borderline cases that you can call something a game or not a game, it's not really a big deal. Um, so the where Desert Bus lies on all of this is that it actually, when you break it down, has all six of these values. Um, it definitely has rules. There's You have to drive the bus in the middle of the road. Um, if you fall off, you are ravaged by bandits or something. Um, bad things happen if you go into the yellow. Um, does it have a variable and quantifiable outcome? Uh, yeah, you can either drive on all the way to the end, um, or you can fall off and die, I guess is the best way to put it. Just death happens when you go into the yellow. Um, does it have a valorization of outcome? Um, absolutely. Uh, you have this eight hour drive that you're fighting against. This is <laughs> seriously real, real time at eight hour drive. Um, and if I stay on this road for eight hours, I will reach Las Vegas. That is the, <laughs> that is the part of this game. Um, and so, if it's a very long goal, long, long form outcome, um, and so it, it, it is something that's kind of annoying or difficult to grasp or something like that, um, but that's something we can get to later in the critique. Um, is there player effort? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this game is actually a lot harder than I expected. I was like, we're just gonna play Desert Bus, we're gonna run it for like having like five tries later, I'm like, damn it, this is the game! <laughs> I uh, have a couple run-throughs where I got about 14 minutes in and seriously passed out. I fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> and before I knew it, I rolled off the road and I was like, are you kidding me? Am I really just that, like, zoned, zoned out? Um, so player effort is obviously there. Um, not only do you have to hold the up button, like you're holding down a gas pedal, it also stops at 45 miles per hour no matter what, you can't actually go faster than that. But if you let go, you will start to slow down. Um, so that's a thing. You can also hit the uh, down key to go reverse. Once you hit zero, you can put it into reverse gear and go backwards. I don't know what the that's just a thing that's in there. Um, there's a lot of little things like that. Um, is the player attached to the outcome? Um, I'd say to an extent, depending on what you're doing. Um, in my case, the outcome is to not crash. Um, it's not necessarily to get to Las Vegas and get my one point, but it is to not crash for as long as possible. Um, you can see me just going all over the road um, just kind of playing around. 
little bit of it is when you're doing a let's play you're also performing to an extent so there's little bits where I just kind of play with the road because why not it's there I'm there we can hang out with each other um, the final bit though that's the trickier part is are there negotiable consequences um, this is a thing where you just drive for forever um, if you're not serious about it which is pretty sane <laughs> if you're serious about this game there might be a problem um, but if you're not if, if it's just like oh whatever I just want to hang out and try it out it may not necessarily be considered that same kind of thing I would argue that there is negotiable consequences because this is a thing where I mean you even see it on the desert bus for hope charity that um, <laughs> you can definitely get up and leave at any time um, and be taken out of the game or there's things where um, you might just crash because something will happen um, and that's where why we're all there to watch is just to make sure that you crash um, so like an alternative example to this um, something that might be a borderline case would be a game like Click Quest which is another loading ready run inspired game their comedy troupe gets around in the uh, uh, gaming sectors the gaming areas um, but Click Quest is a game where you just click you click and the more clicks you have the more you level up and then as you level up nothing really happens you just keep clicking the the more the more the higher the level you have the more clicks between levels um, and it's kind of a beautiful game because it's supposed to be a uh, knock on the RPGs where you just grind forever um, and so this is supposed to be the ultimate grind and it's a very very funny game very, uh, when I was playing it play in, in sarcastic quotes when I was clicking it um, there was a couple people that were on and it made for a very interesting time and a very vibrant community and it was kind of it was cool um, and cool also in sarcastic air quotes um, but it does have the rules in that you have to click the square um, it has a it doesn't have a variable and quantifiable outcome because you can just go up and I think that's the biggest point where it f fails Jules test um, and it at that point it's kind of like a no risk gambling kind of thing um, it could be something like that um, I mean there's obviously a lot of player effort um, and I, I'm not sure one could necessarily consider themselves attached to the outcome um, although there are colors that you can choose and I know that when I was playing it I was attached to the outcome of being always the white color which is neutral or it's kind of a, a hard weird thing because you're clicking in this space but you have to avoid clicking on the choose a color option because the moment you do that you don't get to be white anymore um, and so that was kind of a just a weird little quirk to the game that I was kind of playing with um, but yeah so you have a game like that which is completely different from Desert Bus um, and to some extent is not necessarily a game um, one of Jules' biggest challenges is that he says that The Sims is a borderline case for a game. Um, just because there's not many clear goals to it, and thus there's not a valorization to the outcome. So just stuff happens is the, kind of the, the go on The Sims. Um, otherwise, yeah. Um, I guess the we've kind of done game to death, but... Um, the other place we can talk about is to what extent is this a simulator? Um, to what extent is this a sim? Uh, and I'd like to say that it in in feeling, but not in realism. It's not like Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, but it definitely gives you that thematic simulation of bus driving, or at least how we understand it. It might be completely different in bus driving communities. I don't know. Um, but as far as driving a completely empty note the uh, rear view mirror <laughs> I feel like that's your your existential cry for help um, maybe that's something that you can take the uh, critique of this game into a more metaphorical place 
Um, but that first line in the game, a new line of verse simulators, games stupefyingly like reality. Um, just a line that always is cute and funny, and that word stupefyingly is just beautifully placed there. Um, but uh, one of the other things is, uh, is it a fun game? Um, not that anyone says that it has to be a fun game, um, but I'd argue that it is it's engaging, even if it's not fun. Um, even even when it has a lack of engagement, that can be part of the engagement. When I was falling asleep driving, um, there would be that kind of nodding feeling that you get. And <laughs> once you nod, you actually re-engage yourself in a very like dynamic way, um, which is kind of hard on the body. But um, it's definitely not fun. Which is kind of cool that it doesn't. I mean, this is this is not the prime example for a game that's not fun, um, but it is an example. <laughs> it is a game that's not fun but engaging. Um, so if it's not enga or if it's engaging, then I guess the other way you could go is it is it an educational game or is it a is there learning that happens while you play this game? Um, is there when you play Desert Bus? Do you learn something? Um, I'd say that there's an experience to be had in Desert Bus, um, and does that experience teach you anything? Always is a good answer. Um, I mean, there's there's what I learned when playing it, and I learned that driving a bus is very boring, um, at least when you're driving a bus on a desert road. I learned that Las Vegas, Nevada, and Tucson, Arizona are very far away. Um, I mean, there's there's part of it that um, it's like these are kind of little things to learn, but in game design there's always something that you learn. Um, a bus that veers to the right means you have to correct to the left. Um, I learned over the course of playing this game that um, it's best to stay on the left side of the, the road, um, which is not like a, a thing that you learn that's based in reality, because you don't want to drive on the left side of the road in the US, that would be a bad thing. Um, but in this game, if you drive on the left side of the road, because it's always correcting to the right, you have an easier time getting onto the road if you run off of it. Um, not only that, but you're also working against the the kind of the grain of this game when you drive on the left, so it's a lot harder to fall off on the right side of the road. Um, it's just the, you know, these are the kind of strategies that you develop when you play games. Um, they can just kind of naturally come along. Um, and that's kind of when when that experience of learning is shaped by a strong designer, um, something like a team meet kind of thing, um, that's when you, you learn the game the best, and that can be a, a source of having fun. Um, I learned to what extent I can swerve around the road, um, and had a lot of fun with that. I actually, it was kind of fun to like try to swerve and near miss the sides of the road, or uh, driving to keep the middle yellow line in the middle. Um, there was all sorts of things. I think now I'm I'm trying to uh, I'm gonna drive on the right side, <laughs> see how how I if I can uh, legitimately drive a desert bus in a legal way at 45 miles per hour. Um, anyways, I think we're coming near the end of this, but I've got a couple more points that a couple different ways I can critique this. Um, a lot of the themes of this game is masochism. <laughs> um, the other thing being minimalism, and there's plenty, plenty more. Um, but it's a it's a hard game with a big challenge. It's the the scope of this game is really, really big, and part of it may be uh, a lot bigger than people are ready for. You know, I don't even know if that's the right way of putting it. Eh, scratch that. Let's bump on the sides of the road. Um, but the opposite mechanic of driving the desert bus would probably be Terry Kavanaugh's game Super Hexagon, which is a lot of twitch movements really fast and also really impossible, and the idea of it is that you want to spend a lot of time doing it. Um, and it kind of gives you this reward for bragging rights. In this case, if you actually get a point, that's pretty damn awesome. Um, in Terry Kavanaugh's game, if you actually finish the game, you are one of only like I think 200 people at time of 
doing this have actually beaten that game to its ending out of many, many, many thousands of players. Um, anyways, the other uh, idea is that this is a very minimalist game. There's only one mechanic for play purposes. There's a lot of other little things that can happen. Um, our friend, the uh, amazing and wonderful air freshener, may be considered uh, one of those mechanics, um, but is mainly a, a piece of aesthetic that is the most interesting part of this game. I love you, you little green air freshener. Um, there's also mechanics for like opening the door to the bus if you stop at a bus stop, uh, but that's nigh impossible and not actually like something to help you play through the game unless you're playing it like a role-playing game. In which case, I guess you could make an argument for that. Um, outside of that though, there's only one goal, unimpeded outside of that mechanic. Um, the, the main goal is to get to the end. Um, and they just make the end very, very far away. So it's kind of like a Final Fantasy game. Um, but the, the details of this game are mainly in the, the aesthetic, in these bushes that are going by, and at like hour seven or something, or a fly hits the windshield, um, which is an amazing part to get to. Um, but, uh, oh, there we go. I think we're gonna, are we gonna crash here? I think this is, I think it's time. Um, anyways, I've put about 20 minutes into critiquing this game. It's definitely not all of the critique that can be said. I think I only really made four points towards the themes and ideas that are present in the game. Um, but the beautiful thing is there's definitely a lot more things. Um, <laughs> there we are. That's it. Once you hit the side of the road, you slow down. Um, and wherever you stop is where you land. I landed in the middle of the road. So suck it, freeway. Um, now the tow truck is going to come and get me. You're going to see that in just a second. Um, anyways, thanks for uh, watching this little test. Um, not meant to be super serious in a lot of ways. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And if you guys have anything else that you want to uh, see or talk about, if you want to have your own critiques to this game, I'd love to hear them. Um, because the one of the bigger ideas of this Let's Play is to organize ideas of critique. Um, so yeah, I'll be playing more games, and uh, hope you guys have a, a nice rainy day.